Hey guys, welcome to Sophista Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this ultra modern multicolored fondant paneled cake. Now this is more along the lines of the fall autumn colors again, and I wanted to get a varying shades of the earth tones in this cake with a fondant paneling. And I wanted to show you how to do that. So if that sounds good to you, stick around. We'll get to it right after the intro. So I went ahead and filled and crumb coated these cakes. I just figured you've seen this enough times that uh, if you're returning to my channel, you've seen this enough times that you know how I do that. If you are new to the channel, I have done this in almost all of my previous videos that are done with actual cake and not cake dummies. Sometimes I use the cake dummies because it's just honestly a time saver for me. So for this one, I did use real cake and I am just using a piping bag with some of my American buttercream to do a final coat on this cake. And I'm using a piping bag this time just because sometimes I find that it's a little less mess. And I'm using my plastic smoother to just get that all smoothed out and get all the, the air bubbles out of it if there are any. And go ahead and move that top lip into the middle. Place this in your freezer for 10 minutes or your refrigerator for 10, 20 minutes, I'm sorry, until it is firm to the touch and does not come off on your fingers when you touch it. And while you're doing that, go ahead and work on your second tier. And I found that I did have some air pockets in this one, so I went ahead and filled that back in and smoothed it again and did the same technique on this one. And place this one in your refrigerator or freezer again until you are ready to do the fondant paneling. And for this fondant paneling, I used ivory, a very pale gray, and a brown on this top tier. Now I just roll it into logs and press them together. And use some cornstarch on your surface and on top of your fondant to prevent it from sticking. And I did run a little water. That's just water that I'm using on the brush to get these pieces to stick together a little bit better. And when you do that, you might find that the water makes some of the color bleed. So go ahead and dust some more cornstarch on the top before you roll it, like I'm doing there, to um, kind of dry out any water that might be on the top. And I did not want these to be a smooth, straight line around the cakes. I wanted it to be a little irregular. So that's why I'm not bothering to try to keep them straight. It's fine. I wanted it a little bit of, um, I thought I'd just give it a little character. And then I just rolled it over to the other side and decided I liked that side better. So I'm going to use that side. And I am honestly just going in and making it a little bit more irregular because it was just a little too smooth for, for what I was going for. And I'm using my fondant smoother just to smooth out any of those lines. My countertop is actually not very level. Um, it's a little warped. I don't know why. It came from the factory that way. So sometimes I have to go in and smooth it out. So I already had measured my cake and found out the circumference and the height of it. So I'm just going in and I'm cutting off the excess. Right here I'm measuring the height and I'm leaving a little bit of extra height so that once it is firmed up from being in the refrigerator, I can go in and cut it level with the top of the cake. And I'm using some acetate sheets. I like to use these acetate sheets to do a panel transfer is what I like to call it. And I'm using, I put a little shortening on it to get it to stick to the fondant so that when I transfer it, it doesn't slide off. And I've just cut it to the width of the fondant with a little extra on the edges so that I can pick it up. And I flipped it over so that I can actually put the side that I wanted on the cake, if that makes sense. It was upside down, so I had to move it. <laughs> and I'm just getting all that bottom edge smooth. I'm using just a little water to get it to stick to the buttercream and I removed the excess water from the board so that it doesn't stick to, stick to the board. And I realized at this point that I hadn't put the fondant flush to the bottom of the acetate. So I just went in and just cut off that extra. Now just gently lift it up. Actually, well, gently and gingerly, just at the same time. Don't waste time. Just pick it up and place it on. You can move it around a little bit. And I'm just smoothing it on to the side of the cake. And I was having a little trouble 
getting it to stick to the cake because there was a little something was irregular in the shape it must have been where i cut the acetate to the flush on the bottom of the fondant it must not have been completely straight so it was easier to actually remove that acetate at that point a little earlier than i would have liked to and relocate the fondant where it needed to be and to get a straight edge i like to overlap the fondant do it like when you put uh, wallpaper on. If you've done wallpaper, you overlap the pieces, cut straight through both of them, take the top piece off, lift it, and remove the fondant from underneath and remove it that way. And then that way you have a flush, a flush cut. And then just make sure that it's all smooth together. Now I'm going to be doing my bottom tier. For this tier, I did more of the ivory and just black. I wanted to do three colors on the top and two colors on the bottom. And I would just do this exactly the same way as I did for the top. It'll be a, just a little bit different measurements in the height and the width or the circumference because it's a, a different size tier. And again, spray your surface with water and lift up your panel piece. Now this one was just a little shy of being long enough. I'm not sure how that happened, but it's okay. I must have looked at the measurement from the top tier because you do have a little wiggle room with fondant. It has a little bit of stretch and elasticity to it. And I did use my hybrid, um, the Liz Merrick fondant recipe on this. So it does have a little bit more stretch to it. Um, just push those pieces together with your fondant smoother. You can see that I'm just kind of manipulating it there. And I have just a little piece that I need to cut out. And once you get it where you want it, place it into your freezer or your refrigerator just so that it will firm up. And don't do as I do. <laughs> don't use your hand as a guide. I've just done this so many times that I can tell by touch when that blade is getting close to my hand. And just remove that extra lip. You need it to be firm because it's just a little easier to do. And here I'm putting my straws in to support the extra, the tear on top. I use the fat boba straws. That's just my preferred method for, for stacking a two tiered cake. Now just pull them up, put your scissors where the buttercream ends, pull it up, cut it off and push them back down. And you know that way they'll be flush to the top of your surface there. Use a little buttercream to get your top tier to stick. And this top tier had also been placed in the, actually I think I just used the refrigerator to avoid a little of the condensation. You have a little less condensation when it comes to room temperature when you're going from the refrigerator to your um, ambient room temperature. Because I needed to work with it right away. I didn't have time. You can place fondant in the freezer, FYI, and bring it to room temperature. That is a myth. Um, if you are, just a little helpful hint, if you are moving a cake from the freezer that has fondant on it, Bring it from the freezer and put it in your refrigerator for a good, oh, six hours to a full day. Really, honestly, do this the day before. And then you do, you're bringing it to room temp slowly so that it's not getting so, so wet. You take it from the freezer temperature to your refrigerator temperature for a day. And then you can bring it from your refrigerator to your room temperature and your fondant will be just fine. I have done this with superhero three-tiered cakes and it has been fine. Okay, so anyway, so now I'm using, I decided that I wanted to do a silver painted line in between the fondant colors. You don't have to do this. At first I wasn't going to do this, but then I thought it needed just a little bit of extra something. So I've done so much gold, and this is more earth tone, 
I just thought with the grays and the blacks that silver would be a better choice. So I just used my silver luster dust with some Everclear. You can use vodka or clear vod or, or um, lemon extract. Mix it up into a paint and you can paint it right on, on your surface. I will link, try to remember to link where I get my silver from uh, in the description. And I did two coats of this. And I'm just using a finer tipped brush to do this. You could do a, a thicker line if you want. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you like. And the flowers that I used were a combination of silk flowers and some dried flowers that I had on hand. You could use fresh. You could do um, sugar flowers if you want. Any of those are good options. And I wanted to put them at an angle on the side. Sometimes it gets a little monotonous with flower placement. So I like, and, and I like to uh, mix it up. So there you go, guys. My multicolored, fondant paneled, autumn inspired, earth toned. <laughs> Lots of words to describe this cake. Cake! I hope you like what you saw. And if you did, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. And let me know if you have any questions. And if you hit that notification bell, then you will know when I upload new videos. I usually do it twice a week. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time. Bye!